Hello guys, today I want to explain one of my philosophies about users and roles in Laravel. It's kind of an answer to one of the tweets from a month ago, so I was procrastinating on that topic. But what I wanted to talk about is two different tables for different types of users. So in here, one table is for user and other is for admin. Could be a different scenario like doctors and patients, teachers and students, whatever. So some developers prefer creating separate tables because, well, they are separate entities and models. And why would I not suggest to do that? So here's what I replied. And there is a logic to that because there are different fields for the users and also it's easier to monitor them. Okay, that makes sense. In most cases, not in every case, I still disagree. And here are a few links. And one of the links is a free lesson from my course, Recreating Booking.com API. And I want to summarize it for you. Here's a similar scenario. We have property owners and users who would book those properties and both have profiles on the page or on mobile app personal details like this one on Booking.com. So should there be different tables for property owners and users? I don't think so. Let's take a look a bit deeper. So in most cases, my suggestion is this. So user is a user of your system first, which means everything related to auth, login, register, passwords, remember token, and maybe a few fields related to profile, which would be universal, like photo, like how to display the name, like phone number, which would be relevant for any user of your system. And then everything else should be offloaded to roles and profiles. So first, the user of the system is user, and you can use user model of default Laravel to work on everything related to auth without any custom guards or any custom logic. It's all then provided in Laravel for you. And then roles and permissions could be offloaded to, for example, a package like Spati Laravel permission, or you could do that without package. So that's another layer. And then the third layer is fields for profiles, which could be all in one table with some fields nullable, or you could have separate tables for users and admins. And then over that lesson, it's free, by the way, I will link that in the description below. I go through my way of thinking of what fields should be where, create the migration, and then we land migrations for users, migration for user profiles. We land on some fields which are tricky to decide. So again, I explained that logic. You can read that in full. I will link that in the description below. But here's another example, doctors and patients, where fields are pretty different, right? So patients have their birth date, social security number, blood group, address, and all of that. Some fields are the same, but most of them aren't. So then I would create, still create user table, and then separately create a table patient with foreign ID to user ID, and then separately doctors. So this would be the schema if the profile fields are very different. But still, users come from Laravel and profiles are separated. Now let's get to the why. Imagine that instead of this, you have separate doctors and patients database tables with all those fields duplicated in each of them. So doctors would have name, email, password, created that and stuff, and then patients would have name, email, password, and any field related to auth. Now, what if you want to make changes, make some logic to the auth? You would need to duplicate those in both tables. For example, what if you want to add activity log of who logged into the system when you would have log and then foreign key to the what foreign key to doctors or foreign key to patients table or both or maybe then you need to introduce polymorphic relationships or you want to for example send an email to a user that user object would be what doctor or patient and then basically everywhere you need to make some changes to the user to the auth you would need to add if statement or two fields instead of one. So then you end up supporting two auth systems separately. So while it may be okay and it may feel okay, it may be even logical for small projects where you think about those users as separate entities, if your project grows with more functionality, in most cases, you would regret that separation. Again, in most cases. I will repeat that because there's no 100% guarantee. There's nothing set in stone in Laravel or in coding. Maybe in some cases it does make sense. If you have the case for that, please write in the description below and let's discuss. The final thing what I wanted to mention in this lesson is guards. So I see some people have misconception and misunderstanding about what guards is. They think that guard is doctor and patient and you should specify multiple guards 
in the config auth of Laravel. So here's config auth, you have guards, and here you would have doctors as a provider and patients as a provider. But I want to read you the part of Laravel documentation. In authentication, at the very beginning, we have introduction which mentions config auth here with this notice. Guards and providers should not be confused with roles and permissions. So roles and permissions are about gates, policies, maybe external packages. So even Laravel docs emphasize that you should not use guards for user roles. So yeah, this is kind of explanation of my philosophy based on a few examples. What do you think? Pretty sure we'll have something to discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.